Of all of the different watercolour techniques, my favourite technique is working wet on wet. In this video, I'll show you how I use this technique to paint this little duck. Watercolour is all about transparency and the fluidity of the paint. If you want to improve your watercolour paintings, you need to understand how to control the amount of water and pigment on your brush and paper. And one technique you'll need to practice is painting wet on wet. Painting wet on wet is a technique where you apply wet paint to wet paper. When you do that, the paint spreads and blends more easily, creating soft edges and organic shapes. I use the wet on wet technique on every single painting I do, and it's one of the reasons why I love painting in watercolour so much. It allows me to blend the colours on the paper. When you apply the paint to the wet surface, you can be more expressive, and sometimes, if you allow it to, the painting will paint itself. The paint and water reacting on the paper together will often give you results that you couldn't achieve if you tried. When you work wet on wet, you allow the paint to flow and mix on the paper. You give up your control to the medium and it can often lead to unexpected and exciting results. With this duck painting, most of it was worked wet on wet. I used only three Winsor & Newton colours, French Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna and Indian Yellow. And I used Arsh Hot Press watercolour paper. This is the reference photo that I used for the painting. I took it myself a few years ago. I was attracted to the way the sun casts those dramatic shadows on the bird and I loved the calm water and the clear reflection of the duck. I masked off the white areas of the duck before I started and then I used my large hake brush to wet the paper. I wet it all over, including the duck itself. When I paint the water in, I want the colour I use to wash over the duck as well, just to tie everything together and to prevent the need of having to join up hard edges where the water meets the bird. I turned the painting upside down because I was going to paint in a graded wash. I want the water at the front of the painting to be darker than the colour at the back of the painting and I thought it would be easier to work upside down like this. For the water I used French Ultramarine. I didn't want the colour to be too pale because I'll have water on my brush and because I've got water on my paper I need a fair amount of pigment here otherwise it will be too pale when it dries. I used my large mop brush to start painting the French Ultramarine onto the wet paper. This is a number 12. I've put a link to the brush in the description of the video. So up the top here, or at the front of the painting, I want a decent amount of colour. And then as I work my way down the paper, I will have less paint on my brush and the colour will fade away. painting loosely over the top of the duck as well and that will avoid any hard edges from forming around the edge of the duck and it will make it easier for me to paint the duck in. I went back and put a bit more colour at the front of the painting and then I took the paint out of my brush and I used it damp to take a bit of colour off the duck and the reflection. I wipe my brush on a cloth as I do it. I turned my painting back around the right way and I waited until it had dried. Here I'm re-wetting it gently with some more clean water. I mixed a green from Indian Yellow and French Ultramarine and I started to wash on some movement or ripples in the water. 
the water was really calm, so there wasn't a lot I could do with it. So I had to exploit what I saw on the reference photo a bit. I'm just working wet on wet here, leaving the blue showing in some areas. You can see the beautiful granulation that the French ultramarine is giving me as well. Then I used my brush again to take some of the excess paint off the duck. When everything was dry, I used my number two mop brush to paint some water onto the body and the back of the duck. I wanted to wash in a light colour here. I mixed a little bit of French ultramarine into my burnt sienna to dull it slightly, and then I painted a light wash of that over the wet area. Because I wet a larger area than where I put the paint, I ended up with a soft edge along the front of where I stopped the paint, and that allowed me to join up with it later when I was ready to paint the front of the duck. I picked up some burnt sienna on its own, and I dropped that on there as well, just to add a warm patch. I ended up taking that burnt sienna over onto the front of the duck, but that area is dry. I didn't wet the paper all the way over there. So what I have to do is take the paint out of my brush and soften the paint edge at the front there. So I don't want a hard edge there. I mixed a bit more burnt sienna into French ultramarine to deepen the colour slightly, and I painted that there as well while it was wet. And then I allowed that area to dry before I moved on. When it was dry, I wet the front of the duck and the head, and I painted on a darker version of the burnt sienna and French ultramarine mixture, just onto the wet paper. I also increased that area of burnt sienna on the front of the bird. You can see the two colours are blending there together because the paper's wet. All I have to do is put the paint basically where I want it on the duck and then the water on the paper and the paint blend the edges together by themselves. I don't really have to do anything at all. If you find that your paint moves uncontrollably on the wet paper, wait until some of the water has been absorbed slightly. You can also adjust the consistency of your paint and check the water level in your brush. Sometimes your brush might be too wet when you pick the paint up. When that layer of paint dried, I re-wet it carefully with some water. I mixed some more burnt sienna with French ultramarine, really dark this time, and I painted that onto the darkest areas of the duck. When I mix a dark colour like this, I like to use freshly squeezed paint out of the tube, and I mix it with a brush that is only slightly damp, and that keeps the water out of the paint, keeps it fairly thick. I did add a little bit of water to my mixture though because I wanted it to bleed on the paper. If it was too thick, it wouldn't move like it is there. Once I was happy with the placement of my darks, I got my liner brush out and I started to tidy up edges. This area here where the burnt sienna is isn't as wet as it was when I first started, so I got some of that dark paint and I suggested a few feather shapes in the wet area. I had a water line forming further back, but I didn't worry about it because I knew I was going to paint some feathers there. On a whim, I decided to sprinkle a little bit of salt into that wet paint to see if I could get some texture there. And here you can see the texture that the salt gave me after it had dried. The side of the duck I also painted wet on wet. So here I'm wetting it with water. I used a mixture of burnt sienna and French ultramarine again 
and I started to add a few darker areas on the side. I left some of the lighter underwash showing in places. I didn't completely cover it with this new layer. And here, as I paint, I try to suggest a few feather shapes as well. I keep an eye on my reference photo, but I'm not following it exactly as I see it. It's just there if I need a bit of guidance. While that's wet, I come back with a slightly darker mixture of the same two colours. So it's got a little bit more pigment in it now. And my paper's not quite as wet as it was when I first started. It's still wet enough for me to work into it though. And then I warmed my paint mixture up with a bit more burnt sienna this time. I'm still working on the wet paper, but you can see that the paint isn't spreading as much because my paper is not as wet as it was. It's tending to sit where I put it, but it's still giving me those soft edges that I'm looking for. I got my little zero rigger brush then and I added some of the dark mixture along the bottom where the waterline is and I allowed that to bleed up over the surface of the duck as well. And then I used that brush to suggest a few more finer feathers. I will make a full length tutorial of this painting for my Patreon site where I don't skip over anything. So join us there if you'd like to paint this little duck along with me. Okay, now I'm going to mix a colour for the reflection of the duck. I wanted a less saturated colour for this. So that was French Ultramarine. Now I'm getting some Burnt Sienna. These are the two colours that I've used on the duck. Into that, I mix some Indian Yellow. And then, when I'm happy with it, I mix a bit of water with it so that it's not as dark as the colours that I used on the duck. I also mixed some grey from Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. This is more of a 50-50 mixture of the two colours. When I painted in the reflection, I also painted this on wet paper. So here I'm wetting the paper with some clean water. I didn't paint it all in at once because I knew it would dry before I got to finish the section that I was painting on. So I painted in this section here, right near the duck first. I took the water further than where I'll be putting the paint. And that way, where the paint finishes, I'll have a soft edge and I'll be able to join up with it later. With my wet brush, I pick up some of that colour I mixed and I start to paint that onto the wet paper here. I decided to take that colour over the top of the bottom of the duck there to make it look like it's in the water. I'm only going to work on that section just there for now. The paper's starting to dry up the front there so I get my wet brush and soften away that edge so that I can join the paint up with it later when I paint the head and neck of the bird. I won't have a hard paint edge there. Here I switch down to my smaller Colineo brush to paint in the back edge of the duck. Then I got some darker brown paint on my brush, the colour that I used on the duck itself. And I started to paint in some darker shapes that I could see. As I mentioned, I didn't want this colour to be too dark. When you paint reflections, look closely at it and you'll see that the dark areas in the reflection are lighter and the light areas in the reflection are darker than the subject. So these dark areas aren't as dark as the dark areas on the duck. And the light area, so that little area at the back where the white of the underside of the tail is, it will need to be darker in the reflection. Here I'm using a slightly darker mixture of the two colours so that I can start suggesting some of the feather shapes in the reflection. Just loosely 
as I continue to work on the wet surface, the water starts to absorb into the paper. So when I put the paint on, it doesn't spread as far. I can start to add a little bit more detail. I also used my brush to remove a bit of paint. So I used it damp to take off some of the pigment while it was still wet to create a few highlights in the reflection. I wipe it on a tissue or paper towel and I dip it in the water to take the paint off as well. I need to make sure that there's no excess water on the brush because if I put more water on the paper, it will disturb the drying pigment and it will end up creating some blooms where I don't want them. I waited until the back section had dried and then I started to work on the front. Here again, I'm wetting the paper, but I wet the paper into the area that I just painted as well so that I can join up with it with this new layer of paint that I put on. I start with my mixture of paint that has the Indian yellow mixed into it. I smoothed away that edge where this layer is meeting the last section that I just painted. Here I'm going to paint a little bit more pigment right near the duck in the water. As the reflection moves away from the duck, it becomes lighter in colour. So here, near the duck, I need to make it slightly darker. And again, here I start to paint in some of the reflections. I can see the edge of the wing reflected in the water there, so that's what I'm painting in there. I can also see the warm area on the neck, so I paint that in as well. And I also use my little rigger brush here to reflect some of those feathers that I can see. Here I can see that cast shadow that's on the neck. So I paint that in as well. And then the beak. And then I take that colour with the yellow mixed into it all the way up to the top. And I can actually see two eye reflections in the water. There's an elongated one where my brush is now and there's a smaller one above it. So I'll paint them both in. I waited until that was dry and then I used some of my grey mixture on the beak and some of the darker mixture in the eye. I had the colour that I used on the water on the white section of the rump here in the reflection. So I'm using my eradicator brush to take a little bit of paint off. I won't take it back to the white of the paper here because I don't want to. I want the reflection to be darker than the feathers above. I ended up using a white pastel pencil to add a few highlights here and there on the bird. I also darkened some areas along the waterline. I also re-wet the head of the duck and I deepened the colour on the shadow that was on the front of the head. So I put a bit more paint there. That's on wet paper. So there it is there, cut off my board. There were a few areas on this duck painting where I worked wet on dry, but the bulk of the work was painted on wet paper. Working wet on wet is an exciting technique to use, but it requires practice and experimentation to master. You have to be aware of the amount of water on the paper, in your brush and in your paint mixture. Adjust the degree of water in those things if it's not working the way you want it to. Also, because it's fun to work on wet paper, 
don't be tempted to overwork the painting, which can sometimes happen. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week. My favorite water... In this video, I'll show you how I use this technique. What? You stumbled on the little duck. To do it again. Oh my God. Did your tummy go then? Should I do it again, Carl? No, do what again? The last bit. Sure. The whole lot? The last bit. Which? Just that last bit? Okay.